because of the simplicity in it. So we're looking at this block right here. Um, this one, I didn't use a, a real clear background piece, so it's kind of hard to see the heart in it. But on the sample I've got tonight, it'll really pop out at you, which is great. So we're going to cut strips of fabric. And depending on which size was it, I think you guys are all making the nine inch blocks. So I think it was a one and five eighths inch for the nine inch. So in other words, by the width of the fabric, you just stretch. That doesn't work when you got a bunch of fat quarters. So. Yeah. No. Then you have to I have several. Yeah. Yeah. You had to do that once before. Yeah. Fortunately, and I've had it came to do out that in the right spots. So. Yeah, I've had to do that lots of times too. But, <laughs> but you cut those, and then your only other pieces of fabric, your actual heart piece, and your background piece. So not lots of different things to cut on this one. And I like this one because we're going to really work with this. The other thing that you're going to need is a piece of the heat and bond again, and. Uh, you can see where I drew lines on there yesterday with a heart, but I used that um, fabric marker that disappears on its own, so it's going away mm -hmm. already. But um, you'll just lay your heat and bond on the template that I gave you in the handout and trace it right there. And the great thing is that with the, the heart, it's symmetrical both ways. So you don't have to worry about flipping it over and doing things because it's going to come out right no matter what, same both directions. Um, if you are doing something that you want it to come out a certain way, then you have to flip your thing over to get it to do that. So you're going to, let's start our block with our heart on this one. So you take your piece of fabric. You're going to fuse your heat and bond on the back of it. You've already got your heart drawn on there. Okay, so you fuse it on, and then you cut out your heart. So I've got the little heart shape right here. And when I'm getting, you know, here, I want to put it in the center. So what I do with this, I always take my little block that I'm putting it onto, and I just take it and kind of, I don't want a fold there that's going to really stand out and stay there, but I'll just take it and finger press it. So now I've got a line that's the center of my, my block right there. And so on the heart, I want the, the dip here in the center, and I want the point down here at the bottom lined up on that. And so that makes it a very easy way to line it up. I mean, you don't have to sit down with your ruler and do all of that. And I just always kind of eyeball how far this is from the top and bottom, and it, yeah, it works. It doesn't have to be perfect. So you get that set up, you peel away your paper backing, and you fuse that right on there. So th then we've got, uh, we've got the center of our heart all made, okay? And of course, you'll stitch it with whatever stitch you want around the edge. It can be a decorative stitch, it can be a plain zigzag stitch, it can be a blanket stitch, um, whatever you want it to be. And if you're doing it by hand, you can do a blanket stitch by hand. Do you know how to do that? No. Okay. So now let's go ahead and um, look at all of our little, little blocks here. And if you look at this, this is just a four patch, a four patch, a four patch, a four patch, all the way around that. And we want to make this really easily, don't we? Don't really want to cut out a hundred little squares, right? No. So we're going to take our two strips, put them together, and you're going to just stitch down the edge. Okay? Go ahead and press it so that you've got it pressed towards the darker color. So now we've got a piece like this. And now it's time to take your ruler and go down. Whatever was your starting width of your strip, so in this case, one and five eighths inches, every one and five eighths inch you cut. 
and that gives you all these cute little pieces. Okay, I think that is just like the most fantastic thing. I mean, you know, you could go crazy cutting out 50 little squares and then trying to put them together, but you just do that. So I get them, you know, here I am with all of these little squares now, and there's quite a few of them. I didn't actually count how many there are, but there's quite a few of these. And what I'll do is, my sewing machine's sitting right here, and I'll have this little stack right here. So I'll take the first one, and I'll pick it up and flip it over. So now, you know, a light and a dark and a light and a dark. And I'll just set it right there and I'll stitch. And I'll pick up this next one, I'll flip it over and I'll just keep going, stitch, okay? So it actually looks like this long dangly chain. And this is what we call chain piecing. And you just make that long chain. When you're done with all of them, go back in with your scissors and clip those apart. And with, when you do that, what you're coming up with now are your little four patch blocks. That is, I just think that is just, I can't yeah. know. It is, it is just <laughs> great. Just right. I mean, I, I know that the four patch block is not a hard, horrible block, even if you had to cut out each square, but it saves so much time doing it this way. And besides saving time, do you know how much thread you've saved by not starting and ending at every one of those? I mean, you know, if you've got this much on each end of it, and you've got the top one and the bottom one, and you ever look in your trash can, it's just full of thread. So you're saving a huge amount of thread by doing that. So now here we are, we've got our little four patch units. <coughs> um, so this is what I want right here. Our block. So we want to take four patch units and we want to lay them around the block now. So here you are, kind of the order they're going to go in. I don't know how many of those I've got. But, you know, so you're going to go all the way around the block with that. Now you got your four corners sitting out here, but let's see, this would be this way, this way, this way, this way. These, these units here in the center need to be one unit. So you want to take these now and flip that and sew it. Take this one, flip it, put it right there, keep going. Take this one with this one, you know, and, and sew them together. So when I'm doing that again, I'll just line them up and go, okay? And then when you open those up, you've got these nice little units like this. So this is again, just some of those time-saving devices. Now let's relay our block out with those units. <coughs> And the thing that you have to realize when you're doing this is when you're putting those together, they're not all done exactly the same. And what I'm talking about is your units of two, um, these two are alike that are on the sides, okay? But then if you look at these two, do you see that they're the opposite color arrangement? So it's, it's two different sections. And I had to think about that a lot yesterday as I started. But now you've got it laid out in your block like we do every block. 
And you know what to do next, right? Flip it over and sew. Flip it over and sew. And flip the next one over, okay? So it's just like every block that we've done where you get to that point where you've just got your three rows and your three columns and you put those together. And now on this one you can really see the heart, okay? Now, <laughs> the other thing I want to say, when I was doing this, in my mind I was thinking, oh, that's, that's light, I'm just going to put a white piece in the heart. And then when I started looking at, this is not a white background on this piece. So I went and dug in the cupboard and found a piece of muslin. And I guess some people don't care but I really notice that difference, whether it's white or whether it's cream or whatever it is. So whatever you're using in your block, kind of try to make that match up. That's our second block for tonight.